Hi everybody, my name is Adam Tuft. I'm a master's student at Durham University in the UK and I'm going to be talking, you, talking to you today uh, about some work I've been doing on uh, tracing and visualising OpenMP programs uh, directed as acyclic graphs with the LLVM OpenMP tools interface. Uh, this is some work I've been doing as part of my master's dissertation at Durham University here in the UK. So. Uh, just to start off with a quick bit of background, uh, what are we talking about when we talk about OpenMP tasks? Well, a task is a self-contained unit of work plus some associated data. Um, packaging up uh, work into tasks allows the, the creation of the task to be separated from the actual execution of the task. So it allows work to be packaged up, scheduled by a runtime environment, and then uh, executed at a later time. Uh, in OpenMP, the main task creation constructs are the task construct and the task loop construct, which um, is a loop that creates a set of tasks. And a set of tasks can be synchronized in OpenMP with a couple of different ways. There's the task group and task weight clauses, which uh, enforce synchronization constraints on set subsets of tasks. And there's the depend clause, which attaches to uh, task create, task creation uh, constructs which establishes uh, dependencies between uh, sibling tasks. So sort of a good example of this is a recursive Fibonacci function, which we've got on the screen here, demonstrating the use of tasks to package up function calls within uh, OpenMP tasks so that they can be scheduled by a runtime. Uh, and then they are synchronized by a, a task weight construct at the end of the function which has the effect of synchronizing both the, the, the two tasks in this function so that the calling task cannot proceed or cannot be completed until the, the child tasks are complete. Um, so let me just get onto a bit of the background as to the, 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 the problem that we're intending to solve here. Uh, Task-based code is kind of difficult to analyze and reason about compared to traditional bulk, bulk synchronous parallel code uh, because of the traditional, because of the, sorry, the additional concurrency that uh, adding tasks to your code uh, gives you. So task-based task code is useful for uh, capturing irregular or nested uh, parallelism, but that additional concurrency adds a layer of complexity to the code as well. Now, traditional thread-centric tools, such as, as Vampire, uh, struggle to give a clear picture of the structure of this code. Um, they will uh, typically show you a particular realization of the scheduling of tasks as projected onto a set of threads at runtime. Um, this is what we can see here in figure one. This is a performance analysis of a typical task-based Sudoku solver visualized in Vampire. And we can see the little color segments there represent individual tasks. And we can see this. Uh, thread-centric view gives quite a poor view of uh, the actual underlying task-based structure, which we'd like to get a, a big picture view of. So we'd like to be able to understand the underlying task graph structure. And this is where the LLVM OpenMP tools interface comes in. It's allowing us to, uh, to get access to runtime data to record uh, the task-based structure of a, of a program. So what we'd like to have is a visualization that we can kind of see at the bottom there, which is an abstract a depiction of a typical task graph where you start a computation divided up into a number of tasks uh, represented as nodes in the graph, edges representing task creation and synchronization, uh, where we have, say, task Q and task R joined together in an operation. Uh, these operations then uh, join up at the end to, to give a final result where, um, in which the actual execution of the tasks is left to the runtime. Um, so on to the actual solution that we've uh, developed here based on the LLVM OpenMP implementation. The tool is called Otter. It's an OpenMP tool, as I said, for visualizing task creation and synchronization constructs in Open OpenMP programs. Um, the benefit of using the LLVM OpenMP tools interface or the implementation of the interface is that it gives a non-invasive form of instrumentation uh, in contrast to direct instrumentation, which requires modification of source code. Uh, it allows the uh, developer using Open M using Otter and OpenMP to observe nested tasks and nested parallelism. So Otter is not just restricted to using, uh, to tracing the structure of task-based code. It can also trace the structure of parallel four-based co code as well. Uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a callback-based 
uh, tool. So it uses the LLVM OpenMP tools interface set of callbacks that are implemented uh, in order to extract its event data and write them to a trace. The trace uh, is written in the, in the form of an OCF2 trace, which is the same uh, trace format used by uh, other tools like Vampire and Tau and Scalaska in the, the sort of the score P uh, measurement infrastructure. So just to give an example of the kind of visualizations that um, the LLVM OpenMP tools interface has allowed us to create with Otter, we've got the same example of a Fibonacci program here whose function is whose purpose is just to calculate the nth Fibonacci function. This is done in a recursive way using recursive task creation, so the top-level call to the Fibonacci function to calculate the nth Fibonacci number spawns two further child tasks. Uh, and we can imagine this as a directed acyclic graph where each task that spawns children has an edge from the parent task to the child task. Um, on the right-hand side, we can see the visualization produced by Otter uh, as a result of the, the snippet of code on the left there. Uh, so the entire program is represented here in the green squares, which are the, the, the initial tasks that encompasses the entire program. A parallel region is represented by a pair of yellow parallelograms signifying the entry and exit events of the parallel region. And the individual tasks are shown created here as cyan squares inside uh, the blue diamonds, which are, represent the beginning and end of the single region. And uh, we can see here some example. we can see here the specific nesting of the tasks. Take for example, task five, which contains tasks six and 12. I'm referring to the node numbers labeled on the graph there. So node five is a parent of node six. So task five is a parent of task six and 12, both of which are synchronized by a task weight at the end of the Fibonacci function uh, represented by the, the red barrier here. So we can see we've, we've taken direct measurements from a real program uh, at runtime of the runtime events uh, encountered in the OpenMP program. And this has been used to generate a, a task graph that directly visualizes the, the underlying task graph structure of this uh, of this task based program, um, we have used Otter to highlight some inefficiencies actually in uh, the LLVM OpenMP implementation as well. These the image on the left here is taken from a, a paper studying the the performance of a a two D Euler Euler equations solver built with the Exahype uh, PDE engine. Um, what we see on the left is a prediction of the expected ta task graph structure given a particular type of tasking task generation logic in uh, in this solver, which is called enclave tasking. The details of the enclave tasking are not relevant. All we need to know is that the purpose of enclave tasking is to create a subset of tasks that are low priority tasks that could be executed in the background to overlap with a communication phase shown in the dark gray bar on the left diagram. The purpose of this is to, is, is the intention rather, is to reduce the overall time to solution by overlapping communication and, uh, and calculation. And tracing this program with Otter reveals the task graph on the right hand side. This task graph is for a single time step in this program, where we can see actually the main traversals of the computational domain are carried out in four separate threads, which we can see running from top to bottom. Uh, but each thread does generate along the way a set of enclave tasks intended to be executed in the background. Uh, and this matches quite well with the prediction that we see on the left there. Now, the results of this exploration into the, the performance of this solver in the LLVM, Open, LLVM OpenMP implementation did reveal actually some unexpected results. And it, it did show that the uh, the backfield tasks were, were actually being, uh, first of all, the number of tasks that could be created were capped at about 1,000 for four threads. Um, and it was observed that tasks that were created were processed and executed immediately, whereas the intention was for it to have a low priority to be available for backfill later on during a, a communication phase. Um, this kind of this highlights the the the, the inefficiency the, the inefficiency this highlights in, in the uh, LLVM runtime is that it's not actually possible to tell the runtime that these certain sets of tasks 
are on the critical path of the program and that other tasks are, are while they are created ready, they are not on the critical path and should be could be left and scheduled at a later time when there is um, when there is when the threads are are hungry for work. So in terms of our future work for Otter, uh, one of the main things we want to do is to extend its its footprint of applicability. Uh, we are currently working on developing an a API to enable data-driven taskification of existing serial code. So rather than tracing code that has had OpenMP task added to it already, uh, the uh, intention would be to, to work from the beginning uh, to collect data from, on the performance of a serial program and ex explore where tasks would where the addition of tasks to the serial code would benefit the overall performance. Um, we intend to extend support in Otter to the depend clause. Currently, Otter only supports uh, the task weight and task group clauses. Adding the depend clause would allow us to recover explicit dependencies between individual tasks, which would be, give, give us a much richer view of a particular task graph structure. Uh, also, uh, we, we intend to allow Otter to be used for more specific targeted uh, improvements in, in, in programs by relating, the, uh, relating performance back to the source of the program, which currently Otter is not able to do. Um, there are a number of other no, a number of other callbacks that will be helpful in LLVM to enable us to do this, particularly around um, device tra the device tracing interface as well. So we'd love to be able to uh, activate tracing on attached accelerated devices like GPUs, for example, or FPGAs, if possible, um, so that we can look at uh, tracing uh, programs that run on that kind of heterogeneous accelerated. Uh, hardware. Um, yeah, uh, I think finally, the final thing to say on this point is we would like it would be beneficial if, if it was a, if it was possible to tell the LLVM runtime um, that certain tasks can be deprioritized or can be held for for later backfill. Um, yeah, so yeah, in conclusion, the LLVM OpenMP implementation has been essential in, develop in, in developing Otter. It's been really useful to help us get access to the runtime events that we need to be able to trace this uh, task-based structure of uh, our OpenMP programs. And we're now able to visualize uh, this task-based structure in a new way that wasn't possible with traditional thread-centric performance analysis programs. Uh, yeah, so I just want to acknowledge the contributions of my supervisor, Professor T Tobias Weinstiel, and also Dr. Holger Schultz, who have been very helpful in preparing this presentation. And just to mention that uh, this work is supported by, it forms part of the Excalibur uh, program, which is supported by the UKRI Strategic Priorities Fund. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the video or send me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to get in touch. Thanks. <laughs>